ஹெல்த் கேர் வேல்ஸ் யூகேவில் இன்றைக்கி ஒரு எம்ஓயு சைன் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் இது இந்த எம்ஓயினால் மாண இந்திய மாணவர்களுக்கும் இங்கே சிம்ஸ் மருத்துவமனையில் இருக்கிற டாக்டர்ஸ் அவங்களுக்கும் எக்ஸ்சேஞ்ச் ப்ரோக்ராம்ஸ் பண்ணுறதா நாங்கள் நிறையா பிளான் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் அதன் மூலிமா சிம்ஸ் மருத்துவமனை இருக்கிற டாக்டர்ஸ் எப்போவுமே புது டெக்னிக்ஸை கற்றுக்கணும்னு ஆசைப்படுவாங்க நம்மக்கிட்ட இருக்கிற டெக்னிக்ஸை வெளிநாட்டு இருக்கிறவங்களுக்கு கற்றுக் கொடுக்கணும்னு நினைப்பாங்க அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டியாக இதை கருதி இன்றைக்கி இந்த எம்ஓஐ சைன் பட சைன் பண்ணியிருக்கிறோம் இன்றைக்கி சிம்ஸில் வந்து டாக்டர் ரஞ்சன் மகபத்ரா அவர்களுடைய டிபார்ட்மெண்ட்டில் நம்ம போன் மேரோ டிரான்ஸ்பிளான்ட்டுக்காக ஒரு தேட்டர் ஒன்று ஓப்பன் பண்ணியிருக்கிறோம் அது சிட்டியில் இன்றைக்கி ஒரு யூனிக்காக பண்ணியிருக்கிறோம் அதாவது வந்து இரண்டு படுக்கைகள் கொண்டது அது அது தேட்டர்னா இது லாங் டைம் ஒரு தேட்டரில் ஒரு மனிதன் ரொம்ப நேரத்துக்கு இருக்க முடியாது ஆனால் இங்கே வந்து தங்கக்கூடிய படுக்கை அவங்களுக்கு மானிட்டரிங் வசதியோடு நாங்கள் செஞ்சு கொடுத்துருக்குறோம் இது இன்றைக்கி சிம்ஸுக்கு ஒரு அடிஷ்னல் ஃபெதர் ஒரு புது இன்னும் இன்னொரு செயற்கையாக நாங்கள் வந்து பார்க்குறோம் இதனால் இந்த கேன்சர் ட்ரீட்மெண்ட்டில் போன் மேரோ பண்ணுறவங்களுக்கு எக்ஸ்பென்ஸ் பண்ணி ரொம்ப நாள் இது பண்ணுறவங்க ரொம்ப கஷ்டப்படுறாங்க அதை ஒரு அருமையான டெக்னிக்னால் அவங்க வந்து விலை குறைவாகவும் அஃபோர்டபுள் காஸ்ட்லேயும் அதை வந்து அவங்க பண்ணிக்கலாம்ன்றது எங்களுடைய விருப்பம் டாக்டரோடைய விருப்பம் எங்கிட்ட சொன்னார் நாங்கள் அதன் படிப்படையில் இந்த தேட்டரை ஓப்பன் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் India to think about our future. So this is the first time that a health minister from Wales has been to India and it's the uh, deliberate opportunity in the fourth year of the Bapio initiative, uh, the medical training initiative that Keshav has mentioned, uh, to support that activity because it's a really important activity for Wales but also I think for India too because We now have had a pipeline over four years of about 100 doctors each year coming into our National Health Service in Wales, uh, working for two years, they're providing direct patient care, uh, because if they weren't doing that, they wouldn't get the proper learning and training opportunity. And at the end of that two years, they then return to India. So the insights and the skills, and people learn good and bad things when you learn. I certainly, through my life, have learned from making mistakes and getting things wrong, but seeing other people do that just as getting things right. To come back and then to be able to apply that uh, to the health service here in India. Uh, and it's more than that, of course, because there's something about the relationship between India, Wales, and the United Kingdom anyway, and not just about the many centuries of the past, but for my own responsibility, the National Health Service was created more than 70 years ago. And it was created uh, by a model from Wales by a Welsh politician, an Iron Bevan. Uh, and so we're really proud of the fact that the National Health Service of the United Kingdom was born in Wales. And 70 years ago in the United Kingdom, people still faced a choice between whether to pay their medical bills, whether to pay their heating, or whether to buy food. And that was a really difficult choice for lots and lots of families. So after the Second World War, we decided to pool our resources. We decided that we would pay from taxes to create a National Health Service owned by the government on behalf of the people and that meant that every single family within the United Kingdom has free health care. So whatever your means, whatever your social background, the National Health Service is there for you. There is no financial limit to treatment you can have. It is simply about the ability of the health service to provide it. So it's a generally comprehensive system and it was a really radical thing to do in the aftermath of the Second World War. And it remains a radical act to keep on funding our National Health Service, the collective will and effort that is required. And it's enormous. <coughs> Just within Wales, a small but perfectly formed country of uh, three and a bit million people. Uh, within the Welsh Government's budget, I spend over half of that though, over seven billion pounds on maintaining our National Health Service each year. So it's a significant enterprise. It's the largest employer within Wales. So it has a significant economic reach such as a direct employer. But as all of you know, in creating and sustaining a health service, well, the health service doesn't make its own bandages. 
Uh, it doesn't uh, provide all its new drug treatments. So all of that activity around the health service, there's a huge industrial scale level activity and the, uh, the sector's economy around it. And I have responsibility for trying to safeguard the legacy, but more than that, to safeguard the future of the National Health Service. And that's where we still come back to India, because the health service would not have been created without doctors from this part of the world. The wider Indian subcontinent was really important in the creation of the National Health Service. There are large communities that would not have had a local health service as part of the National Health Service without doctors from this part of the world. So in coming back here with the medical training initiative, but in the doctors that we know have worked within the National Health Service and returned back to India for a variety of periods of time, some doctors have stayed in India too. Now, and that's part of the story. It's an international success story, the National Health Service. And in doing so, it's not just change the nature of treatment, but I actually think that Britain and Wales certainly is a better place for having a wider variety of people to call that part of the world their home. And to still be proud of who and what they are, just as I'm proud to be born in Zambia, I'm proud to be the Minister for Health in Wales, and I'm proud that my son has heritage and call on his mother's side in Ireland to you, and you're proud of who you are and call more than one part of the world at home. And the health service is very much a visible way to see that made real. Support asylum and since. I have almost 17 years of experience in this field of medicine. We are seeing the various categories of people from various parts of India like socially, economically, poor, and from the weaker section. At the same time, we see the rich and comfortable position the people are coming to hospitals. In my career, first 10 years, I have seen the poor people who are coming for our medical college treatment, for the various surgeries or various problems. Now, with this experience, I found one thing is compulsory. We for the patients to get cured. That is, we have to start one institution in the form of uh, Sims Institute for Medical Science because it is not neither a corporate hospital or an education thing. So, when we join these two things together, what happens, the doctors are doing research activity, they come into the present scenario, what is the medicine or the, what, is the, what is the greatest technology they are using throughout the world. It is, they want to learn. So once it is a hospital, when, if it is a simple hospital, what happens? I finish to a doctor to a program either many MS, MD or MS. After just only practicing, 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 once I finish that, then they are only into the theatres or the whatever they are practice, whatever they do the consultancy or so. But my thing is, our doctors in Sims, last seven years we started, we have touched 1.25 lakhs people like with lower economically poor and the rich people all together. But this institute after us, I started to learn, learn, learn. Nobody is in the Sims have already I am a big person in the world or the country. I, I won't learn anything. But my real doctors, my strength is people will see the infrastructure. That is one part. As a, as a man, we have money, we can invest in anything. It comes as infrastructure. But really, I appreciate my doctors. I am very lucky to have these people on my board. They are willing to learn the techniques. Today, what you know, what you want to know about the other country or other world is having. You name the things they know and they want to go and learn if you want. That's what we are interested in signing MOUs and other things. Whatever you say, they are willing to learn. That is needed for this. Our most of the in the hospitals, it is not there. If you see our operation theater, all the theaters are left. All the latest equipment. That means when I started, I would have said in the year first year, first year, we are in the latest equipment. What is the other thing? Every year, every minute, they are upgrading their techniques and the knowledge. 
everything to the to service the people. That is the concept of the institute. That is the success of the Sims. But Sims success is learning, learning, and it will learn, go on to learn. With this, they want to develop this institution to the next level. Next, we are also think you know, doctor. I mean, I speak, spoke to Mr. Ranjan Mukhopatra. He want this theatre. I asked him, what is the cost? What, why do you want? How will you? Do? He said, it's nothing, sir. It's my passion. So if this theatre is mostly an hundred percent built for satisfaction to serve the purpose of society.